नमस्ते यादव सियाकाल दिस इज सी एस अंकल कांस्टिया वेलकमिंग ईच वन ऑफ यू इन दिस सेशन ऑन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर एक्सपेक्टेड फॉर टेन टू ट्वेल्व मार्क्स एटलीस्ट plus a very important chapter from the point of view of multiple choice questions so we have to do it thoroughly yes so come on get set ready book pen magic book and your full focus is what i want and we will be completing this whole session in approximately 3 and a half to 4 hours but i will divide this into two parts one part derivatives futures and options i will complete thoroughly and in the second part which is the going to be the next video that will come complete your real options growth timing options abandonment and black and schools method because these are the new things that have been introduced by icai and usually black and schools method everybody leaves an option but we will not for this time because black and schools method also has connecting with say a growth option or a real option so we want to be secure and we will cover everything so for this video derivatives futures and options next video next day the remaining part so let the game begin guys please open your uh magic book if you don't have uh, visit the telegram channel probably i'll try to ask my team to share the pdf for the same all right guys do share the video and uh, do like and share it with a lot of students down south who would benefit from this your colleagues your juniors because uh, all of them are looking for this and i'll be happy to teach this chapter in a very comprehensive manner all right again i'm telling you few things black and scolds real options are all of that to be kept in the phase 2 second video which will be uploaded the next day itself so complete this at least two to three times during the examinations derivative set complete that part real options and all of that is also set so i think let's start with the session Okay then. So first, we will understand the concept of derivatives, and then we will take things forward. Right? As the name suggests, something that is derived is called as derivatives. Wow, sir! What an example. Okay. So now pay attention. Derivatives is a financial asset, but whose value is derived from the underlying. This is the typical uh, definition, so to say. Mm -hmm. now i'll give you two examples through which you will be able to understand it thoroughly the example number 1 is the movie mary com all of us have heard the name of the movie mary com right now who played the character of mary com in the movie can i say it was played by priyanka chopra but who is the real mary com can i say it is the manipuri boxer the indian who represented us in uh, olympics and won medals for us so now the main character is the real maricom from manipur who actually played the boxing matches based on her right so she the maricom the real maricom is like the underlying asset based on her the movie was made and priyanka chopra was a derivative of the underlying asset who played the role of maricom the better maricom won the gold the better it helped priyanka chopra to make her name in the movie industry for that particular movie in fact the movie earned more than the real character and that's what actually derivatives can also do in your real life trading as well the second example that i will take is of milk and curd milk is the underlying asset whereas the curd is a derivative can i say based on milk the curd is made and curd is sold independently in the market as well am i right so that is called as a derivative in the same way equity share is the underlying asset and based on that equity share the uh, derivative of that equity share is also sold in the market like there is a equity share of reliance industries limited or a tata motors or a tcs and based on these companies shares hello based on these companies shares the derivative is made and its derivatives is also sold in the market maricom to priyanka chopra milk to curd reliance equity share to reliance derivative 
all this is an example of derivatives are you clear now of what is an underlying and what is a derivative so that derivative is derived from the underlying and is also traded independently let's see a derivative is an instrument whose value is derived from the value of one or more underlying assets which can be anything so there is a real gold and then there is a derivative of a gold now there are various kinds of derivatives what are they th that we will try and understand but what exactly is the meaning of derivative did you get it yes so there is an underlying asset uh, so please keep on confirming so there is an underlying asset and then there is a derivative who which can be commodities precious metals currencies bonds stocks stock indices etc so what is stock index so it is like a nifty so nifty is the underlying asset and its uh, stock index derivative is a nifty derivative right example of derivative as i told you all priyanka chopra earned crores by playing the actor in the movie maricom maricom is the underlying asset priyanka chopra is the derivative can i say without the underlying asset the derivative will have no value whatsoever if maricom wouldn't have become so great and played for india won medals then do you think the movie would have been made never can you make curd directly without milk never <laughs> right so that's how it works so derivative is always dependent on an underlying asset say for example i will tell you that if virat kohli makes a century for rcb and rcb wins the ipl trophy isala cup namde then i will give 100% discount on my lectures so discount on my lecture is a derivative of the underlying asset rcb winning the world cup <laughs> so that's what it is gotcha everybody yes sir in absence of a variable underlying asset the derivative instrument will have no value like in our above example priyanka chopra earned crores because of boxing champion maricom if maricom would not have existed there would not have been Mary, uh, maricom and no movie would have been made and priyanka chopra derivative would not have earned anything curd is a derivative of milk if price of milk increases price of curd will also be directly affected and increase and vice versa and there is a direct connection because the derivative is based on the underlying asset the change in the underlying asset will impact the derivative as well right and this change is based on the real market change of milk say prices of milk increase what will happen to the prices of curd correct but obvious the prices of curd will also increase we'll have a direct the derivative will be directly affected okay what are the participants in the derivatives market so there are three kind of participants in the derivative market one is called the hedger the other is called as the arbitrager and then there are the speculators the first one being the hedgers now who are the hedgers yeah. these are the real businessmen right say for example i am a adani or i am ambani i have sold goods worth rupees 10000 crores or worth dollar 1 lakh now after 3 months i am going to get a dollar 1 lakh but i am afraid what if the prices of 1 dollar to rupees fluctuate then i will want to cover myself in the derivatives market so the underlying currency rate will be there that is the underlying asset but i can enter into a derivative and protect myself from the currency fluctuations that is called as hedging so i have used it for a business purpose suppose i have to pay 5 lakh dollars after 3 months now if i have to pay 5 lakh dollars today's rate is 1 dollar equal to 80 i have to pay 5 lakh dollar according to that it will be 4 crore rupees but that rate is today i have to pay after 3 months what will happen to 1 dollar equal to 80 will it remain the answer is no what if it goes to 1 dollar equal to 90 then in that case it will become 4 crore 50 lakh oh boy 4 crore 50 lakh yes instead of 4 crores so that 50 lakh can be a loss to me i want to hedge that i can go into the derivatives market what is hedging protecting myself from the risk of that currency your fluctuation so i will go in the derivative market and i can insure kind of insure myself that basically is hedging i am using it for my business purpose because there is a business deal and i want to correct 
you know save myself from that dollar recurrency fluctuation this is just an example of currency it could be anything else so if i am using the derivative market for protecting myself from a loss in my business it is called as hedging right now suppose people like you and me who have no business of currencies or any other business we don't have a business of trading in shares or anything we are just students studying but i want to trade in shares and want to earn money from the derivatives market okay then we will be called as the speculators we will be called as the speculators we want to earn uh, money from the derivatives market without having any business interest whatsoever and we are basically relying on our gut feeling so that is called as a speculator that okay i feel that the market will increase because of this this that that i feel that the market will go down because of this this that that and based on that i take a position a buy position or a sell position as the case may be that is called as speculation got it guys done and then there is arbitrager who is a arbitrager arbitrager is a person who will make a risk free profit he knows that the derivatives market in the derivatives market the price of gold is uh, say 1 dollar or 10 grams is equal to rupees 75000 in one market or let's take a uh, simple example of uh, equity share equity share in the no, uh, national stock exchange is one uh, equity share equal to rupees 2500 of reliance and in bombay stock exchange it is 2550 is that a possibility yes so what i will do i will buy in nsc i will sell in bsc yes that is also possible so can i say i will make a risk free profit of 50 that is what arbitrage does utilizing the benefit because of market imperfections is called as arbitraging so your derivative market if it is imperfectly priced in two different markets the same asset you can use the benefit of arbitraging so these are the three participants it comes in the examination that's the reason i explained you in detail so who is a hedger a hedger will use it for the business purpose arbitrager will see a riskless profit opportunity and start and speculator is a one who just you know speculates kind of and tries to earn profit out of his market predictions based on his market predictions gotcha everybody yes sir then we have the next thing and that is called as derivative instrument so now sir we are very excited because we want to be a speculator some may say sir i want to use hedging for my father's business uh, then there are arbitrages so i want to use my uh, derivatives market so in this derivatives market there are four instruments which we are mainly going to study one of them is forwards yes forwards is also kind of a derivative instrument and you are using it for hedging but that is discussed in the forex chapter you have to comment and tell me whether you want the revision for forex chapter yes sir then comes the swap can i say the swap is discussed in irrm interest rate risk management chapter so now we are left with the two chapters options and futures now we are left with two chapters options a uh, two concepts options and futures so let's start with our first concept and that basically is called as the options market so first derivative that we are going to study is options second derivative that we are going to study is futures for the remaining two options there are separate chapters and that we will do when we pick up those chapters are we clear everybody now we are going to start with options options is the only derivative market which gives you a right to decide what you want to do yes you heard that right you can decide the course of action based on your preference if the things are going in your favor you will exercise the preference if not then you can also reject the preference and that basically is called as the options market so let's try and understand there are two kind of options market one is called as the call option right to buy and the other is called as the put option which is called as the right to sell now what exactly is the difference between both of them let's start first hmm first is called as the call option what is the call option right to buy 
right to buy means i can buy it at the price that i freeze yes you heard that right now what does that mean that the price that i freeze so suppose for example i feel that 1000 is its correct price suppose 1000 is the correct price of a particular share say this is the share i feel that 1000 rupees is the correct price of the share so i will freeze this price for me so 1000 rupees i have freezed for this calculator now if in future i feel that the market is going to go up that is when i will freeze the price now oh, pay attention 1000 rupees is freezed by me i feel that the market is going to go up and it does go up then I have a right to buy because I have taken the call option. So if I take the call option, I have freezed the 1000 rupees which gives me a right to buy. The market has gone up. The market essentially has gone up because that's what my expectation was. The difference will be my profit. Yes, you heard that right. The difference will be my profit. Are you clear everybody? And on the flip side, there is something called as a put option. If you are expecting the market to go down, then you will take the put option. What is a put option? It gives you a right to sell. So suppose if the market is here and you have freezed your price at 1000 and the market goes down, the difference will be your profit. Sir, what if the market goes up? Sir, how do you freeze the price? Sir, what that freezing of the price is called? So many questions going in your head is now what I am going to answer. Now pay attention. Call option is used when you are expecting teji, something called as a bull market or when you expect the price to basically increase. You expect the price to increase. That is where you take the right to buy used when you expect the market to rise. So how do you take a call option? So you buy a call option and freeze the strike price. But how can somebody freeze the price for you? The stock market is not of your and my father, right? So you have to do that by paying something called as a premium. So we will pay a premium amount to freeze a certain price because we feel that the prices beyond this point will increase. So I have freezed it at here. Beyond this point, the prices will increase. Now, if the price actually increase, I have a right to buy freezed at this point. For this, I have paid a premium. Hello, for this, I have paid a premium. I have a right to buy at this price. If the market increases, what I will do? I will buy it at this price, sell it at this price because now the market has gone up. So 1,000, 1,200, 2,200 rupees will become my profit. Sir, but what if the market goes down? Then you will make a loss. The answer is no. I will not make a loss. Why? Because I have a right to buy. For that right, I have paid a premium. Now, if the market goes down, I will not exercise the right. And that premium that I have paid will become my loss. And that premium that I have paid will become my loss. Are you clear, everybody? If the market goes above strike mm -hmm. price, hello. If the market goes above strike price, exercise the option and make profit. See, your fundamental should be very clear. Because when I do advanced things, these things will matter a lot. Right. So if the market goes above strike price, exercise the option and make profit. If market goes down below the strike price, don't exercise the option and premium paid will become your loss. And exactly vice versa, in case of put option, you want the market to go down or you are expecting the market to go down. So you freeze this. And that put option is called as right to sell. That option is called as right to sell. So you have freeze this. You have a right to sell. Market goes down. So right to sell, you will buy it again here. So you have a right to sell at 1000. Market goes to 800. The difference 200 will become your profit. The difference 200 will become your profit. Got it guys? So used when you expect the market to fall. How to buy put option? Free strike price, pay the premium. If the market goes below strike price, exercise the option and make profit. Simple as that. But if the market goes up, goes above strike price, don't exercise the option. Whatever premium that you have paid will become your loss. Clear cut. Done, sir. Done. Next, 
two participants are there in the options market now see this huh? you are taking a right to buy you will exercise it if you want if the market goes against your expectations see again i'm telling you if you are expecting the market to go up take a call option exercise it if the market actually goes up that difference will be your profit and vice versa but if you are buying that call option somebody else is selling you that call option so you are an options buyer you may buy a put option put option is right to sell but you are buying that put option try and understand that so you are buying a put option which gives you a right to sell so one is buying put option and the other is buying call option so buying an option and the second part is if you are buying somebody else has to sell that other person is called as the option seller if you have a right that other person has a obligation if you have a right to buy that other person has to sell if you have a right to sell that other person option has to buy got it guys so that's what the other person is called as the option seller now you will feel sir it is so harsh on that person we have a right but he is under an obligation yes you he is under an obligation still he makes a good amount of profit you don't have to feel pity on that person as per sebi stock market in stock market eight option sellers earn money and two option buyers sell money if you take a range of 10 traders hmm. so we have a right that other person is under an obligation is called as the option seller also called as the option writer done in case you are buying the option your profit scope is unlimited because you have freeze the price here call option here you want the market to go up market goes up 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 above the world so high the all difference will become your profit but whatever is your profit will be option sellers option writers loss i hope you are clear with that as well what is the profit that you are going to make? The difference between the exercise price and the market price. So that's what is written here. The difference of exercise price, market price and premium pay. So see, difference between the exercise price and the market price. In case you have a put option, difference between the exercise price and the market price. Difference is going to be your profit less premium paid. Because premium paid is like your cost. Are you done everyone? Yes, sir. And uh, in case of option seller, profit is premium received from option buyer. Loss is limited to the amount of premium paid. Loss is equal to difference of exercise market. So see here, his profit is his loss. Very true. And his profit is his loss. Right? What is profit for him? That if that option buyer does not exercise the right, then whatever premium he has paid becomes that option buyers loss but that becomes option sellers profit gotcha everybody yes sir so that's how it works now we will quickly see the options terminology we know what is a call call is giving me a right option when i am expecting the market to go up and i will exercise it only if it is in my favor the right but not the obligation to buy specific number of underlying security at a defined price until the expiry date so what is expiry date coming to it right and then there is puts the right but not the obligation to sell a specific number of underlying at a defined price until the expiry date. That is called as a put. So when you are expecting the market to go down, take a put option. Expecting the market to go up, take a call option. Call put holder, which is the buyer, the person who buys the right to buy or sell is called as a holder, holder of option. And then there is a call put writer, the party who sells obligation to buy or sell. Obligation, huh? So when will he have obligation to buy when somebody has taken a put option? So suppose if I have taken a put option, I have a right to sell. The other person will have obligation to buy. Got it? And vice versa. It's called as the writer of option. Exercise price is the price at which underlying this can be bought or sold, which is the freezed price. Market price, current market price, which is going on. Expiry, the date by which the right should be exercised. So you have paid a premium, not for lifetime, but for a particular period. That okay, I am paying this for three months. Be within three months, whenever I want to exercise, I will exercise. And I am paying a premium for that. So when option buyer buys a right, he has to pay the option writer a price called as option premium. On paying this option premium, the option buyer gets the right to buy or sell at a determined predetermined date and predetermined rate. 
Got it, everybody? Yes, sir. So, option call put, right to buy, right to sell, obligation to sell, obligation to buy, rule of options. Now, I hope we are all clear with this. So, who is the call holder? The call buyer wants the market to rise. The call seller wants the market to go down. Call writer, increase in call holder, increase in price positive, decrease in price negative. Vice versa for a call writer, he wants the price to rise and he wants a decrease in price. So, if there is a call writer, then he wants the price to go down. So, if the price goes up, it is negative for him because that will be his loss, the other person's profit and vice versa. Option positions. Now, this is very important, guys. Will be used ahead. Long call means right to buy call. Short call means I have sold call. So this is op this is what option buyer does. This is what call option buyer does. Call option buyer. What is a short call? Call option seller is called as a short call. Obligation to sell. You have a short call. So short means sell. Long means buy. Got it? So, sell call. Long call means long, right? To buy a call. Right? And then there is long put. I have bought put. I am the put option buyer. And short put, put option seller. Got it, guys? So, this is the put option seller and put option buyer. So, I am buying a put option giving me a right to sell. Don't confuse, but that's what it is. And if I am buying, the other person is selling. So, short put he has done to me. I am buying the put option. Long put. I have bought the put giving me a right to sell. Achha, done. Then we have American option and European option. Nowadays, everywhere the American option works. What is it? It means that till the date of expiry, I can exercise my right whenever I want to. In three months, whenever I want, I can exercise the right. Sir, if... You thought that the market will rise. You took the call option. But the market didn't rise at all. It always went down and down and down for 3 months. Then what will happen on the expiry? It will automatically be converted. And I will have to bear the loss of the premium. Because it's a right. So I will not exercise the right at all. Till 3 months. I will not exercise the right. So whatever is the premium becomes my loss. Got it? So American option. Till the expiry, any time you can exercise. So, allows the holders to exercise the option right at any time till the date of expiration. But what is the European option? Only on the day of expiration. Yes. So, American option, any time you can exercise. But European option only on the day of expiration. So, price on American premium will always be higher. So, that's a fair point. See here. Price of American premium will always be higher than the European because American option gives the holder to write uh, exercise on any date and not just expiry date. Any date you can exercise. Gotcha, everybody. Yes, sir. Till here, any doubts, anyone? Yes, so rightly said by Moni that uh, open ended is like American option. Exercise it whenever you want. And the other is the Close end it. Okay. So now we move on to the next concept, and that is called as in the money, out of the money, and at the money option. Okay. So what is in the money? If the market is going as per your expectations, meaning you have taken a call option, what is your expectation that the market should go up? Again, I'm telling you guys, be clear with this. Call option, you expect the market to rise. Put option, you mark expect the market to fall. So if the market is going as per your expectation, it means that uh, the market is in the money. And if the market is not going as per your expectation, the market is out of the money. Okay. If it is actually as per what you are expecting, then it is at the money. As in, suppose you have freezed at 1000, you have paid 20 rupees as premium. So, you want the market to go till 1020 at least. So, it will become at the money. 1000 rupees, 20 rupees above. So, 20 rupees profit, premium paid 20 rupees, 0 is at the money. If it goes beyond that in the money, if it goes below that, it is out of the money. Got it? When the price of a derivative is moving in the same direction 
as required by the investor it is in the money that is exercising the option would generate a positive payoff so in case of call option you want the market to go up right so exercise price is less than the market price meaning exercise meaning market price is greater meaning market price is greater then the exercise price it is again it is in the money equal break even at the money exercise price greater than market price oh it is a loss and that will be out of the money and in case of put option vice versa you expect the market to go down and it goes down so you want the market price to be lower than the expected price so your you want the market price to be low so exercise price high market price low gain in the money then add the money and out of the money are we clear everybody yes sir so that is called as the moneyness when the price of derivative is moving in opposite direction as required by the investor it is out of the money when the price of derivative is equal to the exercise it is at the money option done sir no worries at all so again if you consider the premium so that premium amount will be adjusted which i had already told you in the uh, example time now i have taken a specific example for you in case of in the money option for in the money for call option suppose your exercise price the price at which you have reached is 775 market has gone to 790 so can i say 15 rupees is the profit that you are making in the money premium paid 10 5 rupees is the payoff in the money the moment remember this the moment exercise price sorry the moment market price is more than the exercise price in case of a call option it is in the money irrespective of premium and the moment market price is less than the exercise price in case of put option it is in the money and vice versa out of the money put option let's see exercise price 775 same position market price 790 so can i say payoff will become 775 minus 790 and the premium paid is a different thing so overall 20 is the loss exercise price less than the market price out of the money exercise price in case of call option exercise price less than the market price in the money got it done now some additional information that i want to give you practically how does it happen practically what happens is you trade in the premium as in suppose you take a call option you pay a premium of 20 rupees okay you have taken you have freezed the price at 775 as in our case 775 rupees you have taken uh 10 rupees premium you have paid okay now when the market goes up it is the premium which will change so you have bought the call option 775 freeze price by paying 10 rupees now if the market goes up hello if the market goes up then in that case this premium will also increase because you have taken a call option you want the market to go up, the premium will increase now suppose this premium goes from 10 to 18 rupees you can sell this in the market at 18 8 rupees will be your profit but why did this premium increase because the call option market increased here because the call option uh, market price increased here and vice versa in case of put option got it so the real trade is in the premium but premium works on the real market price which if you have taken a call option goes up premium goes up you can sell the premium on the money got it so practically when we trade in the option market we pay or receive the premium for our options that is if we buy or call put option at a premium and the market changes these changes will automatically be reflected in the premium pricing so eventually we buy and sell option at premium got it got it sir example see here market price was 350 exercise price was 350 we paid a premium of 20 now suppose if the market price goes to 375 got it so can i say 25 rupees increase in the market price automatically your premium will increase by 25 and the premium will be reflected at 45 now you have earned 25 rupees sell that premium they sell that premium so you will get 45 you had paid 20 25 rupees is your profit which also happened on account of change in this market price and vice versa 
it can also go down yes very much from 375 it can also go to 360 so 15 rupees decrease so from 45 now the premium will go to 30 rupees all right so that's how practically the system works now we come to the next concept that is intrinsic and the time value of money what is this this is the option premium working so the option premium has two components one is called as the intrinsic value and the other is called as the time value i'll explain you with an example it will be very very clear mm. easily suppose the exercise price is 2340 market price is 2345 now look here automatically we will gain see here see here see here this exercise price is 2340 pay attention hello this exercise price is 2340 market price is 2345 so you have you freeze this year you have a right to buy so buy at this sell at 2345 automatically 5 rupees profit you will make but that will never happen because that will be the minimum that will be the minimum premium that you will have to pay and that basically is called as the intrinsic value that basically is called as the intrinsic value Got it? See here, put option two three four zero and the market price is two three three zero. So by default, ten rupees you are making a profit here. You will never be able to make that because that will become your premium minimum intrinsic value of premium. But suppose now you see that premium sir, chalo forty five rupees we understand. But five rupees we understand because two three four zero two three four five so five rupees is the premium. But instead of that, suppose sir premium is eight rupees, then so three rupees extra. Hello. Three rupees extra that you are paying is called as the time value. So the premium that is justified will become your intrinsic value. Any additional premium that the market is taking from you is called as the time value. Got it, guys? The concept of intrinsic value and the time value in premium. These are the things which will definitely be asked in your MCQs. Ah, huh? this in the money, at the money, out of the money. Uh oh, ha! Huh, this in the money, out of the money, at the money thing. they will ask you in the mcqs this concept of intrinsic value and time value they can ask you in the mcq so suppose if put option is there think and answer me now put option is there 2350 and uh, suppose the market price is 2330 so by default 20 rupees difference is that that will be the minimum premium intrinsic value but suppose instead of 20 the premium is 27 rupees so 20 rupees intrinsic value 7 rupees is the time value total 27 rupees acha everybody yes sir chal so that's how the premium works pay off table very easy market price minus the exercise price minus the premium paid that is your gain or loss as the case may be but put option exercise price you want the market to go down you want the market to go down so exercise price minus strike price minus premium paid this will be your loss or gain as the case may be got it so we are very clear till here so in case of call option you want the market to go up. so market price minus exercise price minus premium paid will be your net payer vice versa put option exercise price minus market price minus premium paid got it sir done now this can also be taken as an example module question so suppose the market price is 43 exercise price strike price which we call is 42 premium is rupees 2 then what will be the scenario here now market price is 42 uh, 43 and our strike price is 42 so can i say we are out of the money right because we are making a loss no in call option we want the market to go up the market has gone up oh yeah so strike price 42 and market price 43 oh yeah 1 rupees extra we are making so that 1 rupees will be your gain got it where is it yeah so this 43 rupees minus 42 1 rupees is our gain premium we have to pay 2 rupees so that net loss is 1 rupees so it is better to exercise if you don't exercise premium whole will be gone 2 rupees loss but if you are exercising because market has gone little up also you are exercising you are at least cutting out on your premium loss from 2 to 1 at least got it guys done and here in case of put option if you have taken and if the market goes up you will not exercise the option case 2 36 strike price 40 oh you will not exercise the 
call option two rupees loss there but here you will exercise the put option four rupees profit but one rupees is your premium so three and two rupees loss one rupees is your net gain one rupees is your net gain got it done now with this the main basic see this whole chapter is divided into two major parts one is called as the basic understanding from which the mcqs will be asked according to me and then is called as the valuation of options and now we are coming into the concept called as the valuation of options let's start okay next concept as i told you all is the concept of valuation what is valuation of options valuation of options is deciding the premium amount as you clearly observed here in my this example i told you all it is the premium that moves up and down and you are buying the premium you are selling the premium that's what gives you your profit or uh, could be a loss as well so here the valuation of premium is very important and that's what valuation of op uh, options is all about valuing an option means calculating and knowing the amount of premium is correct or at premium that is the option being sold in the market is at correct price or not is that the correct premium or not the way suppose if i go to purchase this calculator i will check out that this calculator is actually worth 100 but if somebody is selling it at 120 i will not buy it i will say oh my god why are you selling it at high price 120 is a high price 20 rupees extra but suppose if this same calculator is being sold in the market somewhere at 80 rupees i will buy it because it is being sold at a cheaper price eventually it will come at its right price got it in the same way the same logic is to be applied here as well suppose if the value of options say is just change the signs please change the signs yeah suppose value of options is say 10 and market premium going on in the market say is 12 then we will say that it is overvalued because according to us what is its real value 10 rupees then why is it being sold in the market at 12 it means it is overvalued and if value of options is say 10 and market premium is 8 oh 10 rupees thing is being sold in the market at 8 it is undervalued and we will buy gotcha everybody yes sir so if anything is undervalued, I told you, if anything is undervalued, 10 rupees value of option being sold at 8 rupees, very nice, we will purchase this calculator for sure. But 10 rupees calculator being sold in the market at 12, sorry boss, not acceptable, it is overvalued, we will not buy it. As simple as this. So call option, if it is undervalued, buy. Call or put option, if it is overvalued, we will sell in the market. Method to value an option. Method to value an option. There are three methods which are there. One is the basic method. Questions are asked in the exam for this. From this binomial method, exam questions are asked from this. But the last is the black and scores on which questions have not been asked. But still I am putting a star because you never know. Let's see what happens. So now first we will start with the basic method. This is very, very easy. This is very, very easy. So here they will be giving you a probability of the change in share prices. So suppose if currently the share is posted at 320. Okay. Suppose this is your uh, a put option with a strike price of rupees 300 can be written. So this is your exercise price. What is the exercise price? 300. Okay. Now what will happen when you have taken a put option? Hello, you have taken a put option with the exercise price of 300. So you want the market to go down and look at the probability of market going down. First case, 180. So can I say the market can go down by 120 rupees? But what is the probability? 1%. So 120 into 10%. So 12 rupees should be the premium. Likewise, we will add all the possibilities that are there and then calculate our premium see i'll teach you suppose the price goes from 300 it go we have exercise price of 300 but the market goes down to 180 can i say 120 rupees is our profit but the chances of that 120 happening is 10 percent so eventually 12 then suppose if it goes down to 
260 again we have a chance of making 40 rupees profit but that possibility is also 20 percent so 40 into 20 percent so we will get 8 in the same way then we have the 280 and 0 0.5 so now suppose if the market goes down from 300 to 280 oh 20 rupees down again it is in the money because put option we want the market to go down but the chances of that 20 rupees profit is 50 percent so it will become 10 suppose if the market goes from 300 to 320 oh, oh now from 300 to 320 then it is out of the money we will not exercise the option when we are not exercise the exercising the option there is no point of probability at all then again from 300 if it goes to 400 again we will not exercise the option no point of probability at all so that's how the whole system works that's how the whole system works got it guys so exercise 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 two cases we will not exercise if you don't exercise no expected value of option finally this is the value of option that i get and this is the premium that i should be ready to pay currently for this share this is the premium that i should be ready to pay for this share so in case of value of option pay attention a call option if expected market price is greater then next expected market price minus exercise price into probability. If this is positive, then multiply by respective probability. If negative, then zero. And in case of put option, market price, sorry, exercise price minus expected market price into probability. If positive, multiply by respective probability. If negative, then zero. I think we should write here. Yeah, correct. Exercise price minus expected market price. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, if your exercise price is higher, 300 minus expected market price, 180, we will exercise yes into probability. So, if positive, then multiply by respective probability, yes. If negative, which is the last two cases, we will not exercise. Gotcha, everybody, clear? So, this is called as the expected value of option on expiry, one of the methods to do it, okay? Now we move on to the second method and this second method is called as the binomial method as the name suggests binomial means two options will always be there. Two options will always be there. So as per binomial options there are two possible outcomes by two possible outcomes a move up or a move down a move up or a move down than the current price okay so this is your this is your binomial option now before i teach you all the whole concept of binomial i will want to you to understand few of the points or few of the terminology so to say of binomial model let's start s will be called as the spot price EP is called as the exercise price. P is the probability of price increase. See again, binomial. So, there will be two prices. One, when we expect the price to increase. When there is a word of expectation, probability will always be there. So, probability of price increase. And obviously, the other one minus P will be the probability of price decrease. How much the price can go up? Suppose the exercise price is 50 we expect that the price may go up till 60 rupees in one month's time. So, what is that probability of price going up is the P. How much is called as US, proper price of stock possible and down price of stock possible. Say we expect that it can go till 40 as well. So, that will be called as BS, right? Okay, now then is then there is something called as D. What is D? D is the times that the price goes up. Suppose we are ex we are having an exercise price of 50. We are expecting a US, which is the higher market price, upper market price. It can go till 60. Then in that case, can I say 1.2 times? Chances are that the market will increase. Or suppose if we expect that the market will go down to say 40. 
rupees from 50 to 40. So can I say the D will be 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times the market will decrease. So that basically is called as the D and that basically is called as the U, mm -hmm. right? What is the U times that the price will increase and U is called as the uh, U is called as the upper price of stock possible divided by the stock price. So, say if I am expecting it to go to 60, spot price is 50. So, I am expecting this to be 1.2 times of my exercise price, spot price. And this will be 0.8 times of my spot price. Got it? So, that is your D. S upon S is your D. As in, how did you get this 0.8? Tell me, DS, 40, you are expecting the market to fall till 40 upon the spot price, 50, DS. Got it? DS upon S or US upon S. What is US, DS? Maximum price possible, lowest price, minimum price possible. Probability, we are clear. Spot exercise price, we are clear. And then, if the market goes up, what are the value of call? So, we have a specific formula for that. If the market goes then what down, what will be the value of call? Now, all of this is going to happen three months later, four months later, six months as the expiry is there. So, we will have to get it at the current present value. So, we will use the risk-free rate to bring it at the present value. How much is the T? Is the time period uh, and that is how we will bring all of this at the present value. This overall will give us the binomial model. This overall will give us the binomial model. So, first in the situation, we have to spot the spot price. Also, write down the exercise price here. Then we write the US. Then we write the DS by default. Now, we have the US. We have the spot S. We will get the U. We have the DS. We have the S. We will get the D. So, spot exercise price US. DS, U, US by S, DS by S, D, that's how P, probability also, if it is given, VP and 1 minus probability. So, all of this information, we have to put the values available in the question. Overall, we need all of these four values. Whatever is given in the question, pick it up from there and put it here. Whatever is not available, I will teach you with the formula, which is the next step. So, second step is calculation of probability of upper price US and probability of down price. For that, we have a formula. Obviously, we don't have time to get into the derivation. In, in regular batch, probably I also get into the derivation. But now, we will directly use the formula, which is R minus D upon U minus D. We know what is D. We know what is U. What is R? R is the rate of interest. So, R can be E raised to RT. 1 plus R raised to T as the information that will be given. If it is continuous compounding, it will be E raised to RT. It will be, if it is a compounding, it will be 1 plus R raised to T. Got it? This will give us the probability of upper price and then there is also probability of down price which is 1 minus P, which is 1 minus P. Now, what is the probability of upper price? It is R minus D upon U minus D. It is R minus D upon It is R minus D upon U minus D. What is R? The rate of interest. That's right. Minus D. D? Yes. Down. Down. What is the chance? Or, I mean, what is the, uh, you can say the times the price will come down. What is the chance that it will go up is your U. Not exactly the word chance, but times. How many times? From the spot price, how many times the market will go up? How many times the market will go down? That is your UND. R basically is your, uh, R is equal to E raised to RT. R is equal to 1 plus R raised to T. R basically is your rate of interest. R is equal to rate of interest. Got it? Done. Then we have calculate the value of call at upper level and obviously value of call at the down level. So, let's see this. CU and C, D. So, how do we do this? Let's solve an example and try and understand all of this at a very, very easy level. Suppose, now the question is given, spot price, market 500, 
Exercise price 510, duration 1 year, rate of interest 10%, expected price on maturity US 600, DS 400 down. First thing that we have to do is calculate the U and the D based on the information available. Can I say US is given? Can I say DS is given? Can I say S is also given? So if US is given, US upon S, DS is given, DS upon S. So US upon S, spot is 500. 600 upon 500, 1.2. 400 upon 500, 0.8. Gotcha, everybody? Yes, sir. Make the binomial tree model. How do you make the binomial tree model? Spot written. Exercise price given in the question. Uh, uh, sorry. Exercise price. Exercise price. Is it given in the question? Yes. EP 510. 510. First, write down the US, then the DS. US, sir, written. DS sir written given in the question. If you have US, if you have S, you will be able to calculate the U. You will be able to calculate the D. Clear till here. Now missing is P and 1 minus P. Probability and 1 minus probability. How do you calculate that? R minus D upon U minus D. We have already taken the formula here. Calculation of probability R minus D, U minus D. Okay sir, no worries at all then to. So R is 10%, it is given in the question, 10%. So, R into obviously uh, the duration which is 12 months. So, R is 1.1. So, 1.1 minus 0 0.8 which is D upon 1.2 minus 0 0.8. So, this will become 0 0.75 which is the probability of upper side. And then we have the probability of downside which will be 1 minus P. So, 0 0.25 will remain. So, 1, uh, so 0 0.75, 0 0.75 for upper side probability and 0.25 for the remaining one. Got it everybody? Yes, sir. Now, the value of call at upper level and down level, something that we were discussing here. Now, tell me in case of upper level, can I say I will exercise? The answer is 110%, sir, I will exercise. Because, because my exercise price is 500, but my upper has gone to 600 and that's what I want because it's a call option. So, right to exercise call option when the market goes up. So, 90 rupees. Yes, 90 rupees is the profit that I'm making. Exactly. 90 rupees is the profit I'm making. At 90 rupees profit, can I say at upper side profit, probability is 0 0.75. At downside, probability is 0 0.25. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, plus 0 into 0 0.25 upon 1.1 to bring it at the present value. This is the value of call. See here. This is what they were trying to explain here. Upper level price 60 minus lower level price 50. So, 600 minus 510. 600 minus 510. 90 into probability of this happening 0.75. Then, if it goes down, then in that case, you will not exercise it. So, if you don't exercise it, you are making a 0 rupees profit. Chances 0.25 or bring all of this at the present value will give you value of call option, which works out to 61.36. So, value of call CU into P. CU is value of call at upper level. See here, see you, US minus EP, upper level price minus exercise price, upper level price 600, exercise price 510, 90 into probability 0.75 and then CD into 1 minus P, chances of it going down into 1 minus P. So, chances of it going down, you will not exercise 0 into 1 minus p. What is 1 minus p? So, 0 0.75 and the remaining 0 0.25 upon r. Bring it at the present value 1.1. So, this r could, suppose if this was for 6 months. So, we would have done 6 upon 12. So, this would have become 1.05. What? Easy peasy. Done. So, this is how you solve a question on binomial. Information will be given. Calculate the probability r minus d upon u minus d probability then 1 minus probability is done then calculate the value of call how cu 
when it goes up, how much profit you are making? It's probability. When it goes down, you are making a loss. Don't exercise zero into probability. Will remain zero. Bring both of this at present level by R and you are through with the answer for value of call. Gotcha? Yes, sir. So that is how we calculate using the binomial option. Done. Then there is something called as a two-period binomial. Almost on the same lines. Just that you will have to do the same process twice. One is binomial. Then there is two-period binomial. So doing the same process twice. In the two-period binomial, we divide the total period into two parts. And we calculate the value of option for each node. Two-period binomial model is applicable only for American options whose option can be exercised anytime before expiry. Now, here we have the two-period binomial model, almost similar type of question. See here, 50 is the exercise price, 50 is the spot, chances of it going up. So, this is your US for one year. This then again, it goes up to 20% US for two years. Then we have DS for one year and then we have DS for two years. Simple. This is your downside for one year. This is your upside for second year. This is your downside for second year. Sorry. Yeah. Downside for second year. Got it? So, this all information will be given to you. This all information will be given to you. That the increase in price is at the rate 20%. So, you increase from spot 20% increase, 20% decrease. Then again, 60, okay, 20% increase, 20% decrease. Got it, everybody. Now, calculate the probability like we do and then the value of call like we do. So, let's start. So, choose the part which gives higher PV returns. I will tell you how. So, first we will calculate the probability R minus D upon U minus D. So, we know R. Now, in this question, R is say 6%. Okay. So, 1.06 minus 0 0.8 one point, uh, upon 1.2 minus 0 0.8 because uh, probability of coming down is 80. Going up is 1.2. Going up is 1.2. Got it, everybody. So, P is equal to 1.06 minus 0 0.8 upon 1.2 minus 0 0.8. We will get the probability at 0 0.65. Sorry. We will get the probability at 0 0.65. And then 1 minus P will become obviously 0 0.25. Done. Now the whole sums probability we know. What is it? It is 0 0.65, 0 0.35, 0 0.65, 0 0.35. Got it? So, probability of going up 0.65. Now, comes the main comparison. In period 1, we are going to get 10 rupees profit. Correct? Because 50 rupees has gone up to 60 rupees. Correct? But in case of period 2, pay attention. Can I say it has gone up from 50 to 72? Pay attention everybody. Can I say from 50, it has gone up to 72. So, 22 rupees profit it is making. What is the probability? 0. 0.65. So, 22 into 0. 0.65. 22 into 0. 0.65. Then, chances of it going down. But if it is going down, then in that case, I will not exercise. So, this will remain 0. This will remain 0. So, 22 into 0. 0.65 will give me 14.3. Bring it at first year's value. See, this is after 2 years. After 2 years, so ideally it should be... If I want to bring it at the present value, 1.06 raised to 2. But I just want it at this period 1 level. So, just do it till for once. So, from year 2, it will now come to year 1. So, it is 13.49. Tell me, if you have taken the call option, you want the market to go till 10 or 13.49. But obvious 13.49, you will ex exercise period 2. You will exercise at period Two. And then that also you will bring at the present value. So then again 13.49 is free. See period 1 or period 2. We have two options. When do we want to exercise? If you are exercising at period 1, 10 rupees profit. If you are exercising at period 2, 22 rupees profit. But with the 65% probability brought at period 1 by 1.06 present value. So 13.49. Comparison 13.49 is better. Bye bye 10. 
13.49 finalized again bring it at the present value but the 13.49 chances are again 0.65 so we bring it at the present value 1.06 and that's how we will get the value of option that's how we will get the value of option hey samji guru everybody yes. so that's how the comparison between two periods happen now in this to calculate probability there is another method called as the risk neutral probability method in question if they say calculate using the risk neutral probability method then you have to calculate probability using this method only there are two methods to calculate probability one is probability is equal to r minus d upon u minus d the other method is risk neutral probability and this is what that calculation is this is what that calculation is what is it expected upper share level price into p so us into p so the other method huh? this is the other method us into probability plus expected level at down price only if we exercise upon r upon r simple chalo we have a calculation uh, we have a example down here let's try the current market price of an equity share is rupees 420 within a period of 3 months maximum and minimum price 500 and 400 if the risk free rate 08% what should be the value of 3 months call option under the risk neutral method at the strike price of rupees 450 so now here you will have to try and calculate using the risk neutral method because they have specifically told the risk neutral method use the formula that is given here and see how you will get the answer come on give it a try so i'm assuming you would have paused the video and solved the question now let me give it a try so what's the formula upper expected level of price level of share price can i say it the upper level is expected to be 500 yes sir multiply by p yes sir plus expected share level price that can go down it can go down to 400 into 1 minus p upon 1.0202 is equal to 420 done chalo let's now take this here So 420 into. So sir, how did you get this? So given 0.02 is equal to 1.0202, huh? 8 percent per annum. But all of this is for three months, no guys? Hmm. See here, of a three month call option. Yeah, three month call option. So 8 into 3 by 12, 2 percent. E raised to 0.02, 1.0202. So 420 into 1.0202 will become 428.484. Will be 500 p plus 400 minus 400 p. Done. So this will become 100 p. This will go here. So it will become 400 minus. Uh, 428. So it will become see like this. 428.48 minus 400 is equal to 100 p. 28.48 is equal to 100 p. Therefore, p is equal to 0.284. P is equal to 0.284. Done. That is your probability. Now, how do you calculate the value of call? So how do you calculate the value of call? So at 420. and then goes it can go up sorry the exercise price is what exercise price is what 450 i guess yeah strike price is 450 so if strike price is 450 and it can go up till 500 so 50 rupees what is the probability 0.2848 right and the other option is it goes down to 400 we will not exercise so 0.2848 into 50 upon 1.0202 to bring it at the present value we will get the value of call option hello we will get the value of call option 13.96 13.96 got it everybody so this is how the system works as regards risk neutral probability method 
one of the most important questions that can come is going to be based on binomial. So we are done with binomial. We are done with two period binomial as well. We are done with risk neutral method probability, the simple way probability, all of the methods we have done. Got it? And that's where we complete the binomial method as well. And now you come to the black and schools. So far in the exam, either the basic level comes or the binomial method comes. Both of that we are done. Now comes the black and schools. The chances of black and schools coming in the exam are very low as per the previous probability. As in in previous exams, black and schools has not been asked for a lot of years. A lot of years. Even when I was studying, uh, we were expecting this not to come. But you never know. What if your attempt is going to be the golden attempt when black and schools is going to be asked? So I will be specifically solving questions on black and schools right from your module. Yes, you heard that right. From the module, I will be solving questions on black and schools method. But not at this point in time because that is a lengthier process. So what I will do is first I will complete the remaining parts as in whatever is left in our options and then the whole futures I will complete and then we will come back to this. Don't worry. We will come back to black and schools. I will teach you all how black and schools is to be practically applied. How this as in the formula is to be thought of and how you can actually remember the formula. It will be a very, very easy process. Once you are done with that, we will say that, okay, the thing is done. So for now, only with your permission, only with your permission, only this one page I am not touching because black and schools I will be solving with some. Why am I going to solve it with some? Because as per the new syllabus, as per the new syllabus, there is something called as real options which has been introduced, which has abandonment option, timing of options and all of that. So all of that has few traces of black and schools model. So I will teach you black and schools model plus real options with practical examples given in our module, right? So that you are totally secured. All of the questions which are there possibly in the module, I will teach you. So black and schools plus real options with sums, I will teach you all with sums. I will teach you all, but at the end. So now we will continue with our options thing, wherein we have the last part, which is called as the options Greeks. But again, even after this, if you observe, uh, we have the real options, as I told you all. Mm -mm, where is the real options? And anyways, you will find it in your book. So that real options, the abandonment option and all of that, I will be doing, again, as I told you all, with the, okay. Yes, with the practical sums of our ICI module. Till then, let's complete the next concept and that is called as the option Greeks. From with, once we are done with option Greeks, we will be done with options, but without black and schools and real options. Then we will do the whole futures. Then we will come back to options and real options and then the whole derivatives will be complete. Let's continue. Now, in option Greeks, this can also come for the MCQ for sure. If I am your paper setter, mind you, if I am your paper setter, for sure, I will have a three to five mark question on option Greeks and that to a case study. And in that case study, I will ask you questions. One, two, three, four, five, all related to option Greek. So mind you, it is very, very, very important. If a paper setter like me comes, then you are definitely expecting a five mark option uh, question in this case. So first is called as the delta or the hedge ratio, meaning there are two things which we have. One, either we invest in shares or we invest in call options. So there is a ratio which both of them have that, okay, instead of buying the shares, if I buy options, it will result me the same amount of profitability. So how many options should I bear, share, uh, should I purchase instead of purchasing the real shares? Because in real shares, I will make a loss if it goes down and that loss can go unlimited. But in options, I know at least that if I make profit, good. But if I make loss, it is only going to be restricted to the premium amount, all is well. So what is that combination? 
where instead of purchasing shares, I can purchase equivalent number of options is given by the delta or H ratio. Measures how much option price can be expected to move for every 1 rupee change in underlying security or index. So, a delta of 0 0.4 means option price will theoretically move 0 0.4 for every 1 rupee change. Change in the price of underlying stock and that will tell us how many shares can be bought instead of options or vice versa. Let's take this example. You will be more clear. Now, first, market price of shares is 510 and the premium of this is 35. Now, pay attention. Huh? When the market goes from 510 to 520, the premium goes from 35 to 40. Gotcha, gotcha. From 520 to 530, the premium goes from 40 to 45. Gotcha, gotcha. And then finally, from 530 to 540, it goes from 45 to 50. So, what is happening? On every 10 rupee increase in shares, the premium is increasing by 5 rupees. Did you observe this? I'm sure you observed this. On 10 rupees increase, in market price of shares, 5 rupees is the increase in premium. So, change in share value is 10, change in option value is 5. So, this tells us that for every 2 option, we can buy 1 share or for every 1 share, we can buy 2 call options. So, now if suppose you buy 1 share. So, market goes from 510, share goes up to 520. So, 10 rupees profit you are making. Instead of buying that share, you can buy a call option. When the market goes from 510 to 520, premium increases by 5 rupees. You have two options. So, automatically now premium will increase by 10 rupees. Instead of buying the share, I have bought the call option. Because that saves me from the downfall also. Because if the market goes from 500 to 400, there will be a 100 rupees loss in shares. But in options, it is only going to be till the amount of the premium, which could be 20 into 2, 40 rupees. And that is where delta hedging is used by a lot of companies to secure themselves. Got it, guys? Did you get it? So, that's what delta hedging means or that's what delta hedge ratio means. Number of shares to be bought per option or number of option to be bought per share. But here the formula is given in this way that number of shares to be bought per option. So, change in value or premium of option. So, which is say change in premium is 5. Change in share price is 10. So, it is 0 0.5. So, 0 0.5 shares for one option. So, basically one share for two options. Simple. Delta health stage tells us number of shares to be purchased for every option or number of purchase to be number of options to be purchased per share. Got it, guys. What is the formula? Change in value of premium of option upon change in value of share price. Gotcha. So that is what is called as delta or hedge ratio. Very important. Instead of buying shares, I can buy how much options so that the change in share price or increase in share price will be offset by an equivalent options is what is called as the delta change or hedge ratio, delta hedge ratio. How do you get that? Change in value of premium upon change in value of share, 5 upon 10, 0.5 share per option or per share, two options. Got it? Done. Then the same thing will continue. Then there is something called as theta. Theta tells us that how much the change happens on account of time delay, on account of time delay. How much value of option changes on account of time delay. What is value of option? Premium. So, represents expectation of change in value of option. What is value of option? Premium due to change in time. If the value of an option is 75 and the option has a theta of 2, then after one day, after one day, the value of option will become 73. Because the theta, which is the time delay, is theta is 2. Next day again, the price will go down by 2 rupees. So, from 75 to 73, 73 to 71. Theta is difference in option value upon difference in time. Difference in option value upon difference in time. Gotcha, everybody. Yes, sir. So, so if my... 
टाइम गोज से वन डे हैज गॉन एंड ऑप्शन वैल्यू इज डिक्रीज फ्रॉम सेवेंटी फाइव टू सेवेंटी थ्री सो टू रुपीज ऑप्शन वैल्यू डिक्रीज वन रुपीज टाइम डिक्रीज टू बाय वन ओके फॉर टू डेज फोर रुपीज हैज डिक्रीज सो टू बेसिकली बिकम्स योर थीटा सो नाउ यू नो फॉर एवरी वन डे इंक्रीज थीटा इज टू सो फॉर एवरी वन डे इंक्रीज टू रुपीज द वैल्यू ऑफ प्रीमियम विल गो डाउन so that was theta time then there is rho r h o that will be based on interest rate for every change in interest rate what is the change in option premium measures the sensitivity of option price to change in interest rate indicates how much price expected to change in risk free rate so if an options portfolio has a rho of 3 then for every 1% increase in interest rate value of option will increase by 3% simple then Uh, so rho is done theta is done then there is vega vega means change in standard deviation and the change in option value so t theta rho interest rates vega standard deviation delta pure pure change in uh, option premium upon change in share price and then last is called as the gamma delta of delta what is the change in delta as regards the stock price of the share is called as the gamma measures the rate of change of delta my friend is a delta trader he uses only these things which are given to you and you know marks his trades of stock so measures the rate of change of delta of the option with respect to a move in the underlying assets so change of delta upon change in price of shares so that's how the whole system works delta ratio uh, gamma vega what is vega change in standard deviation and the resulting change in options premium theta time options premium rho interest rates change in option premium and with this we complete the whole of options theory how was it did you understand everything yes now only black and shows and real options are left which i will do after doing the futures so now we are basically going to start with the next derivative and that is we are now going to start with the next derivative and that is the futures okay futures is another derivative instrument which is used by the hedgers by the speculators everybody whoever wants it but now in case of options there was a scene of right and obligation but in futures it is not going to be the case in futures there is a compulsion that you have to square off the trade sir what does that mean i'll tell you so in futures again you are going to do the same thing you are going to predict according to you according to your analysis whether the market is going to go up or the market is going to go down here if whatever you think actually happens then you are going to make a huge profit but if it goes against what you had thought if it goes uh, you know opposite of what you were planning or of what you had analyzed then in that case you will also lose a big amount right so here the profit is unlimited the loss is also unlimited in case of option buying the profit is unlimited but the loss is limited because if you do not exercise then that premium amount is your loss so that's still okay but here it is not going to be the case second thing in futures whatever gain that you are making there is somebody who is making that much loss or whatever loss you are making there is somebody who is making that much amount of gain so that basically characterizes futures in detail how does it work the whole futures process is given here which i will discuss with you so first just have a quick read futures are derivative financial contracts that obligates parties to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined future date and price so you will priorly decide that what you are going to do one is buying futures other is selling futures okay one is buying futures and one is selling futures how the process will work i'll explain that don't worry then the buyer must purchase or seller must sell regardless of the current price at the expiration date future transaction could be related to stocks so you can have a 
a futures transaction in stocks in gold in commodities in currencies etc they are used to hedge the price movement of an underlying asset to help prevent losses from an unfavorable price change so i told you this is also used by hedgers speculators arbitrators alike now what is the difference between the forward and futures chalo let's have a quick discussion uh, two three points can come in the examination let us understand them one forward is otc over the counter there is one question in ICI BOS app wherein they have given this what forwards what are forwards they are over the counter whereas futures are traded on stock exchange in case of forward transaction there is no SEBI or a stock market which is prevalent you will go to the bank and you will tell the bank bank I want a forward or authorized dealer you I want the forward that person will give you the forwards and that's how it works so it is over the counter other is traded on stock exchange type of contract here you can customize it because you are face to face over the counter with the banker in case of futures it is a standardized contract because SEBI is intermediately involved then margin no margin is required in case of forward but in futures the margin requirement is there sir what is this margin requirement so we have a Typical, uh, separate, you can say, concept and making you understand what is going to be the margins in futures contract. Then there is a default. In case of forwards, there is a high chance of a default. Yes, in forward, there is a counter counterparty default risk because I will go to the bank and say, bank, I will come after three months. Please freeze my date and rate. Suppose if I don't come up after three months, then because there is no margin requirement here and I don't come then I will default but it is not going to be possible in case of futures because the margins requirement is there and if any default is there then the amount will be deducted from the margin account. <laughs> Next settlement is on maturity your daily settlement is possible anytime any second you want to settle it is done through the stock exchange that's possible. Here the liquidity is less, here there is, it is highly liquid. Why highly liquid? Because whenever you want to sell, you can sell at any point in time. In case of forwards, a specific date and rate is fixed. You have to come on that date only. You will get that rate only. Right? Here it is volatile. Okay. Less regulation, but uh, in case of forwards, but in case of futures, highly regulated by SEBI, uh, used by business for hedging, used by speculators, arbitrators, and even hedgers as well. So this is the difference between the forwards and futures. Now let's understand the process of your futures. So one, there is a future buyer and the other, there is a future seller. The one who buys the futures is called as longing futures. Now, if you have bought futures, you are expecting the market to go up like we had the right to call, right? So, right to buy call option in the same way here there is long and short. So, suppose if you have done long futures, means you have bought futures. In future, now you will offset the transaction by selling the futures. So, you want the market to go up. If you are expecting the market to go up, you will long futures now market will go up you will offset it by selling the futures and vice versa in case of selling futures suppose if you sell futures at this uh, rate now you want the market to go down so that you can offset it by buying futures so selling futures at higher rate let the market go down you will buy futures at a lower rate and the difference will be the profit are you clear everyone yes so contract to buy is freezed at the prevailing future rate this basically is your upside betting you want the market to go up so long futures is always squared by selling on maturity or before right so what is it it is called as long futures how do you offset a long future by selling it in future so you want the market to go down up so long futures let the market go up sell futures uh, close the deal at a profit but you have long futures and if the market goes down you will have to sell futures but for offsetting because this is compulsory the difference will be a loss and there is no right here by default there is an obligation so you have to have to have to honor it so if the market goes up hello if the market goes up futures buying price x 
market goes up so now it is x plus y the difference will be the gain which is y and in case of market goes down futures buying price x market goes down x minus y that minus y is your loss gotcha everybody in the same way there can also be in the same way there can also be future seller which is called as short which is called as shorting now if you have done shorting if you have done shorting now market goes down you will have to offset the position by buying so contract to sell is freezed at prevailing futures rate here you are doing a downside betting short futures are always squared by buying on maturity or before if the market goes up if the market goes down what will happen so futures sellers so you have shorted the futures if the market goes down you will buy difference will be your profit so here if the market goes down x x minus y so this is your selling price market goes down x minus y will become your buying price gain will be y and vice versa if the market goes up so as i told you that there will either be a huge loss or huge profit in futures for sure but this number is magnified because of one thing which is called as futures are always traded in lots one lot of ril futures is minimum 100 shares yes so if ril is traded at 2175 then value of one lot will be 2175 into 100 which is 217500 just imagine so this is where people have become from rags to riches and riches to rags just by dealing in a futures market right are we clear everybody yes please confirm are we clear so what is the whole process of futures either you sell or you buy right to sell right to buy the difference will be your gain or loss as the case may be okay then we come to the whole concept of margin in futures contract something called as margins in futures contract now there are two types basically margin one is called as the initial margin other is called as the maintenance margin now try and understand see futures is a high volume game high money value game so stock market is afraid that what if you are expecting the market to go up but the market goes down then you are going to incur a huge loss what if you don't reply and you run away with the loss the other party who is going to make the gain we will want his gain no now what will happen because see here i told you all somebody's profit is other person's loss somebody's loss is other person's profit right so if future buyer is making a profit future seller will make a loss and vice versa so in order that there is no default they will take a initial margin from you yes they will take a initial margin from you they will say that okay you have to pay 10000 rupees as margin so how is it decided the amount of margin for that we have this formula which is called as mu this is not why this is actually mu but it's okay plus 3 into standard deviation mu is your daily absolute which will be given in the question sd is your daily absolute uh, change yeah daily absolute change this will also given in the will be given in the question so both of this will be given in the question you have to calculate the initial margin till the time you do not deposit that initial margin to the stock market you are not allowed to trade now this is not final so initial margin 10000 rupees you have paid now as every day the market goes on suppose your balance is going down and down we will keep a trigger which is called as the maintenance margin so say the trigger is at 4000 so if the market touches 4000 by default you will have to refill till 10000 again that 4000 is called as the maintenance margin are you clear so initial margin initially that you have to bring if the margin goes down there is a trigger margin which is called as the maintenance margin if the margin goes below the maintenance margin you will have to refill but why will the initial margin go down sir that is because of the concept of mark to market so what is mark to market i'll tell you suppose you have a long position at 1000 rupees so you are expecting the market to go up but suppose if it goes to 950 so 9 1000 is your long position 950 is your now 
the opposite the short the sale position so 50 rupees is your loss now that rupees 50 rupees loss will be adjusted on a daily basis from the initial margin suppose if 1000 goes to 1100 100 rupees will be added to your initial margin but if it is a loss it will be deducted from an initial margin in this way the margin will keep on going down if it touches the maintenance margin it is a trigger you have to refill till the whole initial margin amount which is 10,000 as the example in our case gotcha everybody so what is initial margin participants in a future contracts are required to deposit margin in order to open and maintain futures position are required to deposit margin in order to obtain and maintain a futures position what is maintenance margin Maintenance margin is the minimum amount a future trader is required to maintain in his margin account to hold futures position. So that is the minimum amount a futures trader is required to maintain for sure. Right. So, so as soon as it touches the maintenance, you have to go back to your initial margin. See initial margin once you deposit can fall can fall can fall but minimum it can go till maintenance margin minimum amount that is why it is called as a minimum amount mark to market settlement daily futures are marked to market every day so the current price is compared to previous days price now in case of maintenance margin if it touches maintenance margin refill till the original initial margin if balance in initial margin after adjusting mtm mark to market goes below the lower limit as fixed by stock exchange margin account will be restored to initial margin margin account will be restored to the initial margin got it guys yes sir absolutely clear okay will be restored to the original initial margin now what is mark to market daily settlement in closing price will be adjusted against the deposited initial margin amount and old future contract gets replaced with new one at new price and future contract is rolled owner to over to the next day at new price let's have an example of icai module sensex are traded at a multiple of 50 consider though so this is what this is your lot size hello this is your lot size following quotations are obtained for the trading days low high closing we are not concerned with the low and high let's remove the unwanted information now the only wanted information is there which is the closing balance abhishek bought one sensex futures contract on february the average daily absolute change in the value of contract is 10000 mu 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 is how much 10,000 mu is how much it is correct 10,000 plus 3 standard deviation and standard deviation is rupees 2,000 3 into 2,000 <laughs> 3 into 2,000 so total will be 16,000 total will be 16,000 so mu plus 3 into standard deviation 16,000 the maintenance margin is 75% of initial margin. So, what is your MM? It is 16,000 into 75%. So, it will be 16,000 into 75% and this will be and this will be 12,000. Got it everybody? So, mu plus 3 into standard deviation 16,000 and maintenance margin 12,000, 75% of this. So as soon as the MTM goes below 12, you will have to refill it till 16, not till 12, till 16. Remember that, huh? till 16. So original initial margin, hello, you have to restore it till the original initial margin. Got it? Chalo. Now let's try to calculate it. So see here, we have already calculated the initial margin 16,000. We have already calculated the maintenance margin which is 12,000. So 16,000 and 12,000. Gotcha everybody? Done. Now let's start. 4th Feb, obviously it's the beginning. Now let's go to the 5th Feb. 3296.5 and then 3294.4 what has happened oh value is falling down from 3296.5 to 
now it is gone to 3294.4 so can i say 2.1 there is a loss of 2.1 hello there is a loss of 2.1 into 50 so into 50 this will be 105 minus which will be reduced from the margin correct so is it gone below the maintenance margin of 12000 no so let it continue this is called as mtm mark to market now again next day for next day the price is now freezed at 3294.4 so now 329 so comparison will be from with 3294.4 next day the price moves to 3230 again a loss so 3230 minus 3294.4 multiply by 50 again a loss of 3200 will be reduced from 15895 again 12695 and i will tell you that 12695 is the new margin balance account mark to margin gotcha everybody now next day again see now your new price is 3230 now the comparison will be with 3230.4 next day again what happens this falls down to 3212.3 multiply by 50 so there is a loss of minus 105 omg now can i say it is falling below so 12695 minus 905 so 11790 my god we will have to refill it till 16000 4210 is what we will bring are you clear 12695 was there right of which now because of mtm 905 will become minus so 12695 minus 905 oh my god you will immediately get a call from stock market sir please refill sir please refill Achha, how much i have to refill how much i have to refill till 16000 so how much i will have to bring so 11790 minus 16000 and it will be 4210 and you can see here 4210 and this is how the system will work this is called as the concept of initial margin maintenance margin mark to market gotcha everybody yes any questions any doubts no sir done next so with this we are complete with first the understanding of futures then the futures process then we did the initial margin maintenance margin mark to market and along with that we also did one sum related to it got it done now we come to the concept of theoretical value of futures now we come to the concept of theoretical value of futures so what exactly is your theoretical value of futures see i'll tell you when you are planning for a buy position or long position or a short position okay after three months so one there is a spot price say i'll just give you a practical example say one there is a spot price say of reliance spot is rupees 1000 spot is rupees 1000 and the other is say infosys say info uh, sorry let's go with the uh, reliance only okay suppose reliance spot is 1000 you will always find that reliance three months futures will be a different amount say it will be 1090 why so the same reliance today is 1000 why is it that reliance three months futures will be 1090 because this 1000 is now going to be executed after three months i the stock market is giving me a price of 1090 which is currently 1000 for three months later so who is going to bear that opportunity cost this 1000 might as well i would have invested as well but now instead of investing i am freely getting 1090 price so that 90 rupees kind of is like the opportunity cost of managing the futures is like the opportunity cost of managing the futures so now how do you calculate this is now i am going to teach you all for sure for sure wait okay now let's continue with this example so suppose reliance today is 1000 reliance today for a three month future is at 1090 so why this 1090 i'll explain that to you suppose if 1000 rupees is the price today correct i am getting the price 
for a three month future without paying anything. See, margin is a different thing. But other than that, for freezing this 1090, I don't have to pay anything. So basically, I am getting a benefit of how much of the current interest rate. Now, this 1000 rupees I am able to save. Suppose it is for 20 months and this uh, say Reliance future is for say six months. The Reliance, this is for six months. So 20% into six by 12. So it will be 10%. So it will become 1100. This will become say 1100. Now, 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 now. So ideally, I should be paying 1100 for a spot 1000 Reliance future. So spot is 1000. If I purchase it, my money will get blocked. If my money is blocked, I would have earned 100 rupees, which now I am not able to earn if I would have purchased the spot. Now, stock market is giving me this benefit, 100 rupees benefit that even without taking 100 rupees, they are giving me that, uh, you know, opportunity to sell or buy after six months. So that is where we will adjust this something called as a carrying cost or something called as an opportunity cost. But, 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 but this person will say, what if there is a dividend declare? This dividend, if I would have purchased the spot, I would have got the dividend. Now I'm not going to get the dividend. So, okay, okay. So we will reduce, suppose the dividend of 10 rupees would have been received and the net amount will be 1090. So the net amount will be rupees 1090. So it is like this that I go to the market and purchase this at 1000 rupees instead of this the the uh, shopkeeper tells me come after three months i will give you at the same rate of 1000 rupees but is he going to charge me 1000 only the answer is no he is going to say even though i am going to give you the same price only 1000 but i am saving your opportunity cost that also you have to give me after three months so in all after three months the price will be 1090 for you or 1100 Dividend reduce. So 1090 is what you have to give me for this calculator at a three month later stage. This is called as the carrying cost or cost to carry model of the futures price. Theoretical future theoretical minimum theoretical fair value price or called as the arbitrage free price. What is it? It is going to be the spot price. Yes. Plus the carrying cost, 100 rupees, yes. Minus the dividend, minus 10, yes. Hey, Samjigudu, are we clear everybody? Now, when we do this calculation of theoretical future value, suppose, so now ideally it should be 1090, correct? Suppose if this theoretical future value is overvalued or it is undervalued, then it will give rise to arbitrage, which we will see later on. For now, just try and understand the calculation. How do you calculate the theoretical future value? Spot plus carrying cost. But if any dividend was to be received by the spot, that, that should be removed. So ideal theoretical future value will be spot plus carrying cost less dividend. Spot plus carrying cost less dividend. Are you clear? Spot plus carrying cost less dividend is your cost to carry model. Got up? Done? So... Will your spot price and futures price be same? Ideally, no. The three month difference will give rise to a different pricing at this price only. But the difference will only be of the opportunity cost or the carrying cost as also adjusted with the dividend. Because there is a difference in the spot price and futures price for the same share. It is called as something basis. We call this as the basis. We call this as the basis. The difference between the spot price and futures price is called as the basis. Gotcha, everybody? Yes, sir. So spot price was 1000. Future price was 1090 as we did in this example. Futures price was 1090. That's it. This is your futures price. Basis will be 90. Basis will be 90. Achha? Achha, sir. Done. Now, there can be three situations. In some cases, spot is 1000, but the future price is 950. Maybe on account of high dividend. 
may be on account of a reverse rate of interest like in japan there is negative rate of interest so it could be any reason so this will become 950 are you understanding guys so if spot price is less than the future price which is our scenario we will say it is a contango market basis is negative it is india in india there is a contango market when the spot price is more than the future price basis is positive it is called as a backwardation or inverted market you can say japan or switzerland are the examples of this but when it is equal then in that case the basis is going to be zero it is going to be a convergence market this is a sure shot question for your mcqs multiple choice question sure shot question expect contango backwardation convergence india is a contango market futures price will always be higher than the spot price you can watch it out in money control in any of the uh, zero the any of the apps that you know try it out watch it out india is a contango market basis is always negative when futures price is less than the spot price basis is positive backwardation market which can be a, a case of a japan or a switzerland and then we have when spot price equal to future price basis is zero when the almost the interest prices are very low and there is also a dividend which is there which could be a case of a usa or a uk developed market that is called as a convergence market got it everyone yes sir now calculation of theoretical future price but you don't have to worry because i have made it all easy in this with a whole box level formula sheet yes whole box level formula sheet is available with us and trust me it will make things very very easy for you let's start now the first is the calculation of theoretical future price now how do you calculate theoretical future price spot plus carrying cost less dividend plus carrying cost carrying cost is based on the interest interest could be a simple interest compounding interest continuous compounding interest <laughs> so 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 all of these three scenarios will have to be taken care of simple interest compounding continuous compounding less dividend dividend can be of two types single absolute dividend or what we call as the dividend yield so now here simple absolute dividend or the other is the dividend yield simple absolute dividend means it will be given directly in terms of numbers or a percentage that suppose 20 percent on face value so 10 rupees is the face value 20 percent on face value 2 rupees calculated on face value simple or absolute dividend no impact of time or duration or anything but in case of dividend yield it is based on market price per share so dividend yield is dps upon mps impact of time will be given and dividend will be calculated based on months this is what you will have to remember so dividend will be of two types one absolute dividend pure numbers 10 rupees dividend is paid or 20 percent dividend is paid on face value even if face value word is not uh, used by default it will be assumed that if nothing is given it will always be on face value so if it is on face value it is always simple or absolute dividend so say 20 percent of 10 2 rupees is your dividend so simple absolute dividend will be reduced that amount no impact to be given of months or anything but if it is a dividend yield it will be based on market price dps upon market price per share and in that the impact of months or years or as the case may be should also be given so this is your dividend impact now we will try to understand the yes 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 the interest or the opportunity cost or the carrying cost impact of all of the situations which are here suppose if it is a simple interest with dividend so spot price is 598 interest is say 15 percent all of the cases i have taken here and then for your examination i made this all you have to do is just pick as the question says pick it up from this box apply it gone full marks in your pocket yes so here we are how to calculate the theoretical future price simple interest with dividend spot is 598 interest is 15 percent duration is uh, three months expected dividend is 25 percent expected dividend is 25 percent in this case how will you calculate the in this case how will you calculate the uh 
theoretical futures price let's try it logically 598 plus carrying cost so what's the formula it is spot what's the formula it is spot plus carrying cost less dividend what is the carrying cost carrying cost is going to be 598 into interest which is 15% into 3 months so into 3 by 12 right all right this is your interest amount yes so plus carrying cost uh, what, what how much does it work out to 598 into 15% into 3 by 12 so it is 22.425 less say dividend in this case uh, any dividend is given expected dividend 25% on face value if nothing is given by default face value to so say 2.5 how did this come 25% of 10 rupees will be your face value by default so 2.5 so what's the answer 598 minus 22.425 sorry plus so 598 plus 22.425 minus 2.5 2 so this will be 617925 and here we can see but now instead of solving it this whole big method instead of doing it like this there is a shortcut that we have there is a shortcut that we have what will we do so 598 let's take in common okay sir uh, this will become 1 plus 598 is common only so common into what is 15% rate of interest into time is 3 by 12 into t the whole minus d what is 598 can i say it is nothing but spot so here we get the first formula logically here we get the first formula logically and that is s into 1 plus rt minus d s into 1 plus rt minus d are we clear everybody are we clear everybody so this is your first formula again did you get it 598 in common then again here we have to write 598 so this will become that 1 plus 598 is there by default into r which is 15% into t which is 3 by 12 s into 1 plus rt minus d and here comes my first formula in the same way can i say now we will keep on applying this to all the other things wait i'll take you through now this was a plain situation a plain situation like a uh a simple intra a spot interest at simple rate with dividend you will be happy to know that 8 out of 10 sums are based on this format simple interest with dividend now second concept that i am going to take is simple interest with dividend yield the formula changes only with one aspect and that is the dividend aspect see i told you all here in this case the dividend is absolute so whatever dividend that you have calculated you will reduce it from that s into 1 plus rt minus d but in case of dividend yield it is dependent on market price it is dependent on so market price basically it is dependent on the spot rate it is dependent on the number of months so here when we calculate the spot uh when we calculate the interest suppose if i remove all of this suppose if i remove all of this then what is going to happen is spot which is going to be say 1550 plus there is a uh carrying cost what is the carrying cost it is 1550 into 10% into 4 by 12 right minus listen now minus dividend say expected dividend 5% they will have to write here dividend yield so now how do you calculate this it will be 1550 market price multiply by 5% multiply by 4 by 12 hello multiply by 4 by 12 so your yes this 4 by 12 is to be reduced so multiply by 4 by 12 now what do you see here correct so see 1550 is still in common 1 plus i 
माइनस डी एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट मल्टीप्लाई बाय फोर बाय ट्वेल्व विच इज टी सो आर माइनस डी आर विच इज योर टेन परसेंट डी विच इज योर फाइव परसेंट इन टू टी इन टू टी है आर यू क्लियर एवरीबॉडी सो इट विल बिकम स्पॉट इन टू वन प्लस आर माइनस डी इन टू टी एंड दैट्स व्हाट योर theoretical future price calculation says theoretical future price calculation says simple interest but with dividend yield simple interest but with dividend yield so this is with absolute dividend this is with dividend yield now compounding interest with dividend but without time value of money so now let's come to compounding interest now compounding interest with dividend same thing the only difference here is 1 plus r raised to t because it is compounding minus d and instead of suppose if this is not absolute dividend this is compounding interest with absolute dividend what is the formula now i please confirm are you clear with this explanation one spot into 1 plus r minus d into t are you clear with that explanation guys tell me tell me tell me everybody yes yes sir okay now comes compounding interest with absolute dividend so what is it going to be now we are able to do it on our own absolute dividend what will it be logically spot plus sorry spot spot into 1 plus r raised to t minus d acha and then there is compounding interest with the dividend yield which will become s into 1 plus r minus d raised to t that's it done see here compounding interest with the dividend yield r minus d raised to t now we are able to calculate it on our own compound con then there is continuous compounding so this is compounding interest with dividend compounding interest with dividend yield and now we have continuous compounding without dividend and with dividend so here it is we all know compounding com continuous compounding is e raised to r t so here first will be e raised to r t and the other will be e raised to r minus d into t simple suppose if there is dividend simple dividend so s into e raised to r t minus dividend and if it is dividend yield s into e raised to r minus d into t acha everybody done now all of this what i have explained is easily available in the form of this table during the examination all you have to do is just follow this table and you will be through simple interest no dividend income 1 plus r t 1 plus r t minus d 1 plus r minus d into t compounding interest single compounding there is something called as multiple compounding please listen to my time value of money lecture i have made a lecture on time value of money please listen to that lecture you will get to know what is multiple compounding so if that is the scenario this is what you will use well, obviously it's a revision lecture i cannot get into the depth of each and everything but yes definitely you will get this table this magic book summary table and will really be helpful if there is a question on theoretical future price which can be asked in mcq as well be aware cool 1 plus uh, r raised to t minus d then in, if dividend is absolute if suppose with the time value of money for dividend is there then in that case first reduce dividend bring it at the present value and then multiply it with the interest rate which is there which is a rare case which is going to come so in the exam what are the chances of exam questions i'll tell you they can ask you a question on this this they can ask you a question on this and at max they can ask you a question on this and this the ones which i have highlighted in green are the 99.99% chances that the questions will be asked on 
Done? So with this we complete theoretical future pricing. Some notes, let's go through those notes. In the absence of information, always assume simple interest method. I told you. That's what they are going to ask. This D upon E raised to RT can also be written as D into E raised to minus RT. So that's absolutely okay. Like A raised to M N can also be written as A into M raised to minus N. That's okay. So T time period spot rate of interest number of compounding all of this is there on date of expiry future price is equal to spot price because now there is no interest component no uh, dividend component or no opportunity cost component so on the date of expiry future price will be equal to spot price with this we complete another concept called as theoretical future price tfp maintenance margin initial margin done Futures process done. Basic of futures done. Now we come to the next concept guys. And that is called as hedging with futures. That is called as hedging with futures. What is hedging? What is hedging? Hedging means insurance cover. Simple word. Insurance cover. What is insurance cover? Managing the risk. What is the risk that you have? That whatever price that you have freezed. And say whatever is the price going in the market, if it goes up, down, then I may lose a lot of money. So I want to ensure, hedge myself against that risk. I will use futures for that. For example, I will give you a small example. Suppose I have taken a shares of HDFC Bank. Listen to my example very, very carefully. Yeah? Suppose I have purchased a share of HDFC Bank. Purchased a share. Huh? Purchased a share. Purchased shares of HDFC bank purchased shares of HDFC bank okay sir purchased now what is my fear my fear is that if what if it goes down I will lose a lot of money so if anything happens as regards going down then what will happen I will lose the money Right. So what I can do is I can enter into a futures. I will enter into such a future that even if the market goes down, I will gain. And what I will do is if I have purchased the shares, I will short futures. So see using futures, I am hedging the risk. Now if the market goes up, the share price will go up. No worries. I will gain here. I will lose in futures market. In short, I am not losing anything net net. Suppose if the share market goes down, I will lose in the share market. But in futures market, I will gain. Eventually, I am not losing anything. I have secured myself. I have protected myself from the risk. My intention is not to earn. My intention is secure myself from the risk. I don't want to incur a loss. It's okay if I don't earn. For earning, you are a speculator. But for hedging, you are a businessman. You want to secure yourself. That's it. Got it, guys? So, your hedging means ensuring yourself against an unwanted situation. So, if I have bought a HDFC shares, I have a fear of its price going down. So, I will ensure to hedge it by taking opposite position in HDFC futures. So, even if market goes adverse, I will be secured with an opposite position. However, if I have a Zomato share, so see, what I can do is, I can take an opposite position in HDFC futures. So, purchase shares, but short HDFC futures, but obvious. I will short HDFC futures. So this I can do with HDFC futures. But what if I have purchased a Zomato share and I want to hedge the position. I purchase a Zomato share. But listen, I purchase a Zomato share. But I want to hedge the position. I cannot take a Zomato short a Zomato futures because there is no futures market of Zomato. There are only good companies which are there in the futures market because this is very risky. So what will I do? So I will hedge it with a, a with a stock index which is nifty. But sir, Zomato is a share. I will purchase the share. I will purchase the share. I will short nifty. Sir, Zomato share will go up. Nifty may go up, may go down. They are not related. So what I will do is with this nifty, I will take a beta of Zomato. Once I multiply Nifty's uh, price with beta of Zomato, then can I say I can make them equivalent 
and that is how I will hedge the position using Nifty futures as well for shares which are not listed on or futures which are not listed on stock exchange. Correct. Called as index futures. So if however I, I, I have a uh, bought a Zomato share, then I cannot take opposite action in futures market as there is no Zomato futures. In such situation, no futures contract for so many stock. We will hedge them by using index nifty futures and use beta to, uh, to adjust the exact hedge. Exact hedge. Got it everybody? Yes, sir. Hedging with stock futures. So if you have shares bought, you will hedge it with short in futures. But if there is a sh short sell you have done on shares and you are worried what will happen, long the futures, it will all be okay. How many futures will have to be taken? I will take, I'll, I'll explain you with this example and then we'll be able to connect it because number of futures contracts will have to be taken, right? So which position gave a spec will give a speculator a complete hedge? So pay attention. Suppose there is a short sell of LNT shares worth rupees 10 lakh. Now, if you have short sold, you will have to, you will have to long the future. So, value of one future is equal to rupees 1 lakh. Total, you have short sold 10 lakhs. Can I say there will be 10 contracts? Are you understanding? Correct. So 10 contracts. How did you calculate that? Logically, that total value of short sell was 10 lakh. You want to hedge all of them. If, if, if there is a future value of one future is 1 lakh. Value of one future is 1 lakh. You need 10 lakhs to be hedged. What will you take? 10 contracts. You will take 10 contracts. So value of shares or value of portfolio upon value of one future contract. Value of one future contract. Bought shares of Tata Motors worth rupees 8 lakh. Value of one future is 50,000. So 8 lakh divided by 50,000. How much will it be? So 8 lakh divided by 50,000. Correct. It will be 16 contracts. It will be 16 contracts. Are we clear everybody? Done, 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 done. Exactly. So this is how the whole concept of hedging with stock futures can work. Uh, with uh, yeah, stock futures can work. So hedging of HDFC share with HDFC futures is called as stock futures. It's called as stock futures. But now what if it is a Zomato share, it will be hedged with a Nifty, with the index future, which will also have beta. Let's start with that. So are you clear with how much, how many contracts are to be required? Value of portfolio divided by, you know, value of one future contract. Done. Next is hedging with index futures. So value of share or portfolio upon price of future contracts as we have done. This is nothing but value of one future contract. But multiply by the beta factor of that company. Because what is beta? Movement of nifty with that uh, uh, market with that of this share. So if nifty goes up by 100, this share will go up by 200. So there is a beta of 2. So what I will do is if say market goes up by 100. I will multiply it by this beta, which is multiplied by 2. By default, 200 will be hedged and I have a complete perfect hedge. Are we clear everyone? So this is a, a classic example for here. So hedging with index futures, a mutual fund is holding the following assets. Investment in diversified equity shares, cash and bank balance. Cash and bank balance cannot be hedged. Okay, remove it. So now the beta of the equity shares portfolio is 1.1. Index future selling at uh, index future is selling at 4300 level. Fund manager apprehends that the index will fall by at the most 10 percent. How many index futures should you short for perfect hedging? One index future consists of 50 units. So now you have 90 crores. Hello, you have 90 crores worth of uh, uh, equity shares. But there is a hedging that you require because you feel that the market will fall by 10%. You feel that the market will fall by 10%. So now in this case, what are we going to do? So 90 crores divided by 1. Uh, what is the one value of one future contract? Can I say 4300 into 50? So 4300 
into 50. So, 2,15,000. So, total how many contracts will require? Uh, 90, uh, 90 uh, divided by 2,15,000. So, ideally 4,186 contracts is what we will require. But there is a beta of 1.1. So, we will multiply this by 1.1. So, multiply it by the target beta. Simple, multiply it by the target beta. So, this will be 4,605 index futures. 4,605 index futures. Done, 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 done. Now you have hedged yourself by 4605 futures. How did you do it? Value of the portfolio divided by value of one future contract 4600 uh, 4300 into 50. But if it was a stock future and stock buy, that is okay. But here there is a 1.1 beta. So multiply that by 1.1. You will get the number of uh, index futures to be sold. This is the number of contracts. Huh? 4605 is the number of contracts. Now, suppose the index falls by 10%. Can I say that 90 will fall, 90 crores will fall by 10%. So, it will become 81, right? So, you will lose uh, a good amount of money. But all of this will be offset by your correct futures position. Do you want to see how? Chalo, I'll take you through the whole uh, concept. Now, you are going to lose. How much you are going to lose? See here. Market falls down by 10%. If market falls down by 10%, your beta is 1.1. So, can I say multiply by 1.1? So, 10 into 1.1 is 11. So, 90 into 11%. 90 into 9.9 .9 crores is the fall. 9.9 .9 crores is the fall. 9.9 .9 crore is the fall. Done. So, 90 crores, 10% value of the index fall. 1.1 is the beta. 1.1 is the beta. So, 11% is the fall. So, 9.9 .9 crores. 90 into 11%, 9.9. Now, see how you are going to gain in the futures market. What you have done? You have taken a yeah, you have taken a short position at 4300. Market falls by 10%. So 4300 minus 10%. Now the market is 3870. So you have taken a short position. Now you will close it, offset it by a long position. So 4300 minus 3870, this will become 430. This will become 430. Are we clear everybody? Now, in this 430, multiply this 430 by how many contracts have you taken? So, 4605 into 430. So, see here, 430 per contract is your gain into 4605 contracts into 50 per contract into 50 per contract and this will give you 9.9 .9 crores gain and that is offset here done we have justified that 9.9 .9 crore fall is offset by 9.9 .9 crores gain got it so that's how you calculate the uh, you know hedging part Target beta is always taken as zero if a perfect risk-free hedge is required. See, what I have done is, I have given you the formula here. Beta of portfolio minus beta of target. But it is not required. You can just directly multiply this by the beta. So, that's absolutely okay. If you need a partial hedge, yeah, cash and bank will not be hedged because beta of cash and bank is zero. If contract size in decimals, it will be rounded off to the lower number. Okay, partial hedge. What if it is a partial hedge uh, to be done? Then value of existing portfolio into existing beta into percentage to be hedged. Suppose I just want 50% of hedge to my uh, of my portfolio. So you will multiply this by 50%. So instead, so this year you can multiply this by 
so only 50% of your portfolio will be hedged. Are you clear everybody? Done with this we complete hedging with futures and now the last concept is less and that is arbitrage with futures. Let's start with arbitrage with futures. Are you ready? Chal. Now what is arbitrage? Can I say it is a game of risk free profit? Okay. Now when will the arbitrage arise? Uh, please confirm are we clear with the hedging with futures part? Right, so hedging with futures, margins and uh, you know, the theoretical future price and basics and future process, everything done. Now the last thing, arbitrage with futures. What is arbitrage with futures? So we know how to calculate the theoretical future price. So ideally when I go to, uh, you know, long or short a future in the stock market, hello, if I go to the market and go to long or short the future, it should ideally be at the theoretical future price, right? But if it is not equal to theoretical future price, <laughs> it gives rise to arbitrage opportunity. So suppose theoretical future price is say 1090, but, but, but actual future price is 1100. So can I say, hey, ideally the future price should be 1090, but it is being sold at 1100, it is overvalued. For sure it is overvalued. And suppose if this is 1090, but actual future price is 990, can I say it is undervalued? It is undervalued. Right? So ideally the price should be 1090, but we are getting it in the market at 990. We will say it is undervalued. We will say it is undervalued. Is arbitrage possible in futures? Yes. When, when theoretical future price is not equal to actual future price. Theoretical future price, I will calculate spot plus carrying cost less dividend. Carrying cost can be based on simple interest, compounding interest, continuous compounding. Simple interest, RT. Compounding, R1 plus S into 1 plus R raised to T minus D. Continuous compounding with dividend yield 1 plus R minus D raised to T. Continuous compounding S into E raised to RT or S into E raised to R minus D into T. That's how the whole thing is. That's how clear you should be with your concepts. So profit from market imperfection. Correct. So when your actual future price is not equal to theoretical future price, we will say that, yes, there is a huge scope for arbitrage. Arbitrage will square off the futures only on the date of expiry. So now we will see there are two situations which are possible in arbitrage. One, if AFP is less than TFP and it is an undervalued situation. And if AFP is greater than TFP, it is a overvalued situation. Yes, Chal. so if AFP is less than TFP, what will happen? Suppose if AFP is say 1100 or 1090, actual future price is say uh, 1050, hurrah, 50 rupees, there is a full scope, 50 rupees, there is a full scope that we will get a profit or what we call as the gain. We will get a gain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what is going to happen? Pay attention very, very carefully. Pay attention very, very carefully. Okay. So today you know that you are getting the futures at a less price. Hello. You are getting a futures at a less price. Are you understanding my point, my boy? This is tea or coffee, brother? Tea or coffee? Tea. Very good. You know English. Shabash. Okay. So, some tea on the table. Okay. Chal, pay attention. Now, you send me, no? Zomato, Swiggy. I'll give you my address, phone number. Send it to me. So much tired taking this lecture. Yeah, you'll send it. Chalo wait attention. Now, AFP actual futures price is less than theoretical future price. What is the theoretical future price? Sir, it is 1090. 
एक्चुअल फ्यूचर प्राइस इज वन जीरो फाइव जीरो तो समथिंग विच इज वर्थ वन जीरो नाइन जीरो समथिंग विच इज वर्थ वन जीरो नाइन जीरो इज अवेलेबल एट वन जीरो फाइव जीरो इज अवेलेबल एट वन जीरो फाइव जीरो आई यू क्लियर विद दिस यस सर आई एम क्लियर विद दिस सो इफ इट इज अवेलेबल एट लेस प्राइस बाय इट मीनिंग लॉन्ग फ्यूचर टूडे when will you long when will you short you should know that if you know this then done you are through so you are going to long futures today but if suppose it is opposite suppose this is 1090 and this is 1050 so what is there actual future price is higher short it short it because you are going to get a better price short it are you understanding now the process today if you are doing long futures opposite in shares you will short sell shares okay as soon as you short sell says you will get money invested at the current share price after my on my on the date of maturity you will have to close the position short futures you will have to close the position buy shares okay and at the same time you will receive interest so now what is going to happen long see this short futures and buy shares will get cancelled why because on the day of expiry on the day of maturity on the day of expiry on the day of maturity uh, it was written no mm, that wait wait i'll show to ha uh, on the date of expiry futures price is equal to spot price right so on the day of maturity short futures buy shares both price is going to be same so short futures money in buy shares money out cancel so in all what is left in all what is left long futures short sell add interest received if there was any dividend it will be reduced and finally you will get arbitrage gain you will get arbitrage gain and opposite situation here if you have short futures you will buy shares how will you buy shares by borrowing if you have borrowed interest you will have to pay then at the maturity long futures sell shares will get offset because it's going to be the same price arbitrage gain will be short futures buy spot shares interest pay and dividend is what you are going to receive at maturity long futures and shell shares will become same price and we will be offset with each other i will close it with the example and then we will come to the black and scholes method and the sums of real option then we have the uh, after the real option we will have the abatement option timing option so wait and watch now example spot price 400 futures price 6 uh, month future price 407 dividend per share 5 rate of interest 20% so ideally what should be the theoretical future price it should be 435 but it is 407 means for sure there is a arbitrage gain of 28 let's try and calculate that arbitrage gain let's try and calculate that arbitrage gain so first we have to find out that what is this scenario all about see first thing that you have to see is what is the theoretical future price spot into 1 plus rt minus dividend will give you 435 28 is your arbitrage gain how do you come to know because futures actual future price is 407 but in market it is that uh, sorry it should be 435 but it is only showing 407 so 28 rupees is your gain now pay attention up logically i am explaining you about the whole formula is there something that should be 435 is available to you at 407 okay so market raj exists so what are you going to do you are going to purchase it right now purchase the futures means long futures long futures means short sell the shares short sell the shares means invest invest means you will get the interest got it so long short sell invest you will get the interest buy sell share sell offset so uh, 4 minus 407 this will offset 400 is your selling of shares getting money which you invested on 40 rupees dividend is the opportunity cost so 28 is your net profit that you will get are you clear everybody with this the futures part is also completed and now we are just left with the black and scholes and the real options are you ready for it guys so now you can do the master sums from the yeah from your uh, magic book and we'll be
now we come to the black and scholes model i will want to solve the black and scholes model so expecting each one of you to please take out a pen and paper hello please take out a pen and paper because that's how i am going to solve this black and scholes model for you so black and scholes model paul put call uh, parity all of this will be done through this itself got it okay so finally the black and scholes method as i told you will be in the next session so just if you have completed this well and good the next session watch it out so that the whole of this is done hasta la vista keep smiling do let me know in the comments how was the session take care bye bye